Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Senusha is poised to reap increased benefits from the Canadian Farm Workers Program. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is lauded for a successful diabetic retinopathy program. National organizations are urged to make greater use of the GEF. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. St. Lucia is poised to reap increased benefits from the Canada Caribbean Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program. Minister for Labour Honorable Stevenson King is in Barbados this week discussing the program along with counterpart ministers from the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, and officials of the Eastern Caribbean Liaison Service. More from Janelle Novell. The Eastern Caribbean Liaison Service, ECLS, is a unit of the OECS Commission established to administer OECS member states' interest in the Canada-Caribbean Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program in Canada. Established in 1966, the SAWP was designed to address short-term labor shortages in the Canadian market. The OECS became an active participant in 1976, and since then thousands of workers have gained employment under the program. The first meeting of the Council of Ministers of Labour of the OECS was held with the aim of considering improvements to be made to the organ that plays such a critical role for the OECS member states. Labour ministers and other government officials of the OECS member states, including St. Lucia's Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, Honourable Stevenson King, lauded the programme, indicating that it has been very beneficial to their countries. Over the years, it has encouraged farmers to save. It has helped them understand the need for savings. But more so, it's the end result, the economic benefits um, afforded to um, to farmers, in that, and that is the farm workers, in that most of the farmers have been able to educate the children, provide health care to their families, give support to the extended family, and at the same time to strengthen the whole economic base. In addition, a number of farmers in recent times have been able to go into their own farm production on return to St. Lucia. At least there is another form of income taking place in St. Lucia. So I believe it has been a quite beneficial program to a number of solutions. The ECLS works closely with Canadian federal and provincial governments, the Foreign Agricultural Resource Management Services, Ministries for Labour in participating OECS member states, and the Canadian High Commission in Trinidad and Tobago. It aims to develop new and or improved relations with third parties to facilitate the flow of technical and other development resources to the organization and its member states and design foreign policy options for consideration by member states and the organization, to name a few. Minister King highlighted the impact on St. Lucia. St. Lucia normally um, sends about 300 workers on average on the program. And if you are able to work that out in terms of the economic returns, on average net economic returns to those um, individuals who participate is anything in the vicinity of about 7 to $8 million annually. And that is a tremendous contribution to the gross domestic product of St. Lucia. The Labour Minister explained that the entity has reached a point where institutional strengthening is required to allow it to go into the field in a more dynamic way for the improvement in manpower. He added that although the primary focus of the service is on the agricultural sector, it should explore other sector opportunities such as hospitality, health, construction and manufacturing, which according to him is laden with opportunities, all with the objective of reducing even further the levels of unemployment in OECS member states. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. St. Lucia's Diabetic Retinopathy Program has received positive and resounding feedback for its progress since its implementation in 2017. More on this report from Fennel Neptune. Officials from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, which manages the Queen Elizabeth Trust Diabetic Retinopathy Program, recently paid a visit to St. Lucia to meet with the steering committee to make an assessment of the program since its implementation. Technical consultant of the Caribbean Diabetic Retinopathy Program, Dr. Kova Baskarang, says she's very pleased that the Diabetic Retinopathy Program in St. Lucia has evolved rapidly. 
She says the dialogue provided them with the opportunity to discuss the next steps for delivering integrated eye care services on island. As well as meeting the steering committee for the diabetic retinopathy program, we also met with the permanent secretary and the chief medical officer uh, to discuss two aspects. One is that in terms of the program, the Vision 2020 link input continues and we have plans for further training and capacity building as well as for introducing quality assurance where we make sure that all the screening that is being done of the uh, diabetic retinas stays at the right quality levels. In terms of um, the discussions with the permanent secretary, we were uh, talking about the need for reviewing the, the broader ICARE strategy for St. Lucia at uh, Ministry of Health level. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma George says she is very delighted that the meeting granted them the opportunity to chart the way forward for ICA services in St. Lucia. We were very pleased in terms of where we are at um, at this moment because we've been able to successfully implement the program in a sustainable way and also providing a new service to the public. But in terms of our planning for the way forward, we were quite pleased to know that with the funding moving forward, we will be able to expand the program to include a more holistic um, eye care program. So we'll be doing an assessment of our eye health programs, looking at our different gaps for, for expanding the program. So we are quite excited about that and we will be um, looking forward to working with them in the coming years. Currently, St. Lucia has four diabetic retinopathy screening sites and one laser treatment site. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Businesses within the city of Castries are being advised against placing signs on sidewalks, creating a hazard for pedestrians, especially those with disabilities. While these signs are placed daily by business houses to attract customers, the office of the mayor has received numerous complaints regarding the placement of those business signs. Castries Mayor Peterson Francis says that the signs are not simply an aesthetic concern, but also create problems for people with disabilities who must navigate around them. The office of the mayor is reminding that under Section 493 of the Criminal Code, Chapter 3.01 of the Revised Laws of St. Lucia 2013, a person who places, hangs up, or exposes for sale in any city or town, any goods, wares, merchandise, matter or thing, into or over any footway, so as to obstruct or inconvenience the passage of any person, is liable on summary conviction to a fine of $1,000. National organizations are being called upon to make greater use of the Global Environment Facility GEF Small Grants Program and build capacity. Established in 1992, the year of the Rio Earth Summit, the Global Environment Facility GEF Small Grants Program embodies the very essence of sustainable development by thinking globally, acting locally. By providing financial and technical support to projects that conserve and restore the environment while enhancing people's well-being and livelihoods, the Small Grants Program demonstrates that community action can maintain the fine balance between human needs and environmental imperatives. Globally, within the UN, the program has invested some 1.76 billion EC dollars in 124 countries with 23,000 projects. In St. Lucia, the program has invested 5.7 million US dollars since October of 2012. For the program's national coordinator, Giles Romulus, the rate of absorption of funding in St. Lucia is not good. We could bring more money into St. Lucia. My global manager asked me recently, do you want more money to, for St. Lucia? What do you think I had to tell her? You can't say you want more money when you have all that money left. I have a lot of money left in my coffers now. If I can get 20 proposals and the NSC can convince itself and we can approve all of them because we have the money available. But it has to be good creative projects that will create results. And as our chair said, results based, measurable results. In 2017, the program approved 17 projects but declined to only 10 projects in 2018. Romulus says one of the reasons for the decline is the pace at which grantees move from planning grants to full grants. So to understand that planning grants are up to 5,000 US dollars, we give our grantees three months to implement 
or to design the projects. Some of them take six months, some of them take nine months, some of them take more months. So that's one of the reasons. Another reason is that reasons, another major reason is the capacity of our civil society organizations in St. Lucia. The ability to rise to the challenge, and even when they cannot rise, to identify mentors who can assist them in that journey of, to access funds. So we had a decline of 41% in the number of projects we funded between 2017 and 2018. But in spite of these challenges, the program continues to have successes. While some regions of the country are struggling to approve projects, others are doing exceptionally well. Sufria, for example, is absorbing a significant amount of funds. Romulus believes that significant changes will occur in that community over the next few years. With a young group of women called Fruta Genes, we have created what we call a new value chain to enable farmers to sell their fruits instead of cutting the trees to plant dashin. And this investment came on top of what the work that was done by my good friend Felix Fenister through Canadian funding. funding. Those young ladies, ladies and gentlemen, have uh, created a little revolution in software. They have two smoothie bars, organic smoothie bars. They started with one. Three weeks ago, they went to two. In the last 11 months, the income gross was around 62,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars. Three young ladies fully employed to be doubled by December of this year. And they're talking to us and I'm talking to them about expanding to castries. From October 2012 to December 2018, the Jeff Small Grants program employed 1,365 people and trained over 6,000 people. This is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Have to do your own spray mix for black sigotoga treatment always follow the recommended safety procedures always wear protective gear when handling or being exposed to the fungicide or other pesticides use only the fungicides recommended by the black sigotoga management unit when the treatment is due the required quantity of the particular fungicide recommended must be mixed with spray oil and applied at a rate of 1.5 to 2 gallons per acre Fungicides which are not recommended or applied at the wrong time or even when the spray treatment is not done effectively can cause the fungus to become resistant to the chemical and therefore may no longer control the disease. Oil fungicide mix which has been stored for too long should not be used to treat black cigotoga disease. If carried out, such treatments may not be effective and can lead to poor control of the disease. Remember. Before each chemical treatment for black cigotoga disease on your farm, first, the oil fungicide mix must be reagitated immediately before application. For more information on how to treat and control black cigotoga on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Cigotoga Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. We have more in-depth scores for you today, following the first round of matches in the secondary schools on the 15 cricket tournament, which started Wednesday. At the Balata Plain Field, St. Mary's College, led by a six-wicket haul from Jason Justin, recorded a hard-fought six-run victory over Babano Secondary. St. Mary's College, batting first after being inserted by Babano Secondary, was dismissed for 86 in 15.1 overs with Winner Island's under-15 player Stephen Abraham making 24 and Mikhail Jabatis and Kleanus Jules 10 each. Bowling for Babano Secondary, Daniel Kennedy bagged 3 for 21, 
Tyler Sentoma picked up two for seven, Tariq Edward two for nine, and Jaden Flora two for 21. In reply, Babuno Secondary dismissed for 81 in 20.5 overs, with Jordan Fauché making 23, Jaden Flora 14, and Daniel Kennedy 10. Bowling for St. Mary's College, Jason Justin collecting 6 for 16, and Denzel Frederick 2 for 15. At the Larry Suits playing field in the Mabuya Valley, Miku Secondary made light work of Clendon Mason Memorial, defeating them by 9 wickets. Clendon Mason Memorial batting first, dismissed for 16 in 6.3 overs. Doing the damage of the ball for Miku Secondary, Alexis Charles 5 wickets and Curlin Charles with 4. In reply, Miku Secondary easily reaching their target, finishing on 17 for 1 in 4.5 overs. At the PI playing field, Sufre Comprehensive defeated Chazelle Secondary by 12 runs. Sufre Comprehensive Secondary batting first, 137 all out in 25.5 overs, with Winnet Island's under 15 player Kevin Gassi making 47 and Risa Alfred 12. Bowling for Shrazel Secondary, Nej Eugene had a haul of 5 for 19 and Genevieve John 2 for 42. In reply, Shrazel Secondary dismissed for 125 in 24.3 overs with Jamal Lawrence making 13 not out and Jaim St. Amy 11. Bowling for Sufre Comprehensive, Zinadmi Regis claimed figures of 4 for 26, John Modest 2 for 31 and Kevin Gassi, 2 for 34. The Office of the Youth Empowerment Project is optimistic that with the introduction of its logo, the accomplishments of its mission will be further enhanced. The project held a logo competition as one of its first major action items. The Youth Empowerment Project is focused on mitigating risk factors that trigger criminal and antisocial behavior at the individual, family, community, and societal levels. Special emphasis is being placed on young men and vulnerable groups, particularly children, at risk youth and women. Among the components of the project is an integrated youth code diversion program, school suspension program, community-based policing initiatives, design options for the George V Park in the city of Castries, and implementation support. The winning logo will be used as the official logo of the Youth Empowerment Project. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The West Indies Rum and Spirits Producers Association held its annual general meeting in St. Lucia with a commitment to strengthen linkages with the vastly expanding tourism sector in the region. The chairman of WISPA says rum is the largest agricultural export of the English-speaking Caribbean, contributing over $300 million in taxes alone to the regional economy. With foreign exchange earnings over $550 million US dollars a year and tax payments of over $300 million, it makes a significant contribution to the regional economy. We created something called the Authentic Caribbean Rum Family. We have common rules and regulations, but that allows diversity amongst producers. So when we go overseas, and St. Lucia and St. Vincent and Grenada and so on, saying we're part of the WOSPA Authentic Caribbean Rum family, doors open. Tourism Minister Dominic Fede, in pledging government support for a uniquely Caribbean product, noted the vast potential of a region which attracts 40 million visitors annually. Tourism is your biggest advertising. 40 million people that will come to the Caribbean this year. It's free advertising for you. Caribbean trade ministers have pledged support in making the Caribbean rum industry more competitive internationally. Regionally, it battles the smuggling of counterfeit rums. Margaret Morplazy, managing director of St. Lucia Distillers, says the AGM discussed issues relating to standards and rules of origins, noting that a Caribbean rum must be distilled and blended in the Caribbean. And this is one of the big areas that we, you know, you don't have people importing and then compiling and creating products. So 
we've been looking at those rules and standards for rum that um, we can all adhere to and live by. The West Indies Rum and Spirits Producers Association comprises rum producers from 15 Caribbean countries. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Was that an earthquake? No. What do you do if there's an earthquake? Drop, cover, and hold on. What does that mean? You drop to the ground, take cover underneath a sturdy table or desk, and hold on until the shaking stops. Well, there's no table or desk. Stay away from the walls, windows, and doorways. Use your hands to cover your head and face and crouch in a corner of the building. But what if you're outside? Go to an open space away from buildings, trees, street lights, and utility wires. Drop to your knees, protect your head with your arms, and wait for the shaking to stop. Wait a vigilant for tout ça qui est wrong. Et préparez pour changer votre rouille si nécessaire. Pas de tremblante, n'importe bagaille qui est capable de déplacer et tomber, clason, la porte, fenêtre, mais avec appareil, capable de poser danger. Changez, protégez tête ou haute, n'importe bagaille qui est capable de déplacer. Pas panique. Consentité à quatre tremblé, à coupé, couvert tête ou avec espéré pour tout. C'est une commission par groupe management des as bien fort et place management des as en cette ici. Et financé par l'Agence pour le développement international Amérique, bureau assistance des as de l'autre pays. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Merci au temps, Nisha. Merci, madame. Département qui n'est pas ce pour information. Uh, gouvernement cette ici, GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN. A présent, Nouvelle Acquayal, présent au Primus Hutchinson. Il y a une agence qui est implémentée pour gouverner l'honnêteté et le bon principe parmi les autorités à gouvernement. Ça, il y a Integrity Commission en anglais. J'ai fait un appel pour tous les officiers pour déclarer tout bien et que ça, il accompli pour l'année qui passe. Ça, il pour faire et puis loi cette loi qui a demandé les officiers publics pour déclarer tout bien qui ont accompli. Loi ça a commandé toutes les personnes qui engagées dans le service public pour faire assurer que tout fait déclaration ça chaque bout de l'année. Si l'on a juste ça, l'année financière là, a duré pour 12 mois, commencé le 1er janvier. Si ces officiers publics là pas obéi à loi, a juste là, a publié non yo à sous gazette et vous un rapport pour directeur des prosecutions publiques, ça veut dire avocat qui est responsable pour adresser cas public qui a concerné le gouvernement pays pour lui sa pre action qui est nécessaire. Loi qui permet pour condamner yon qui coupable soit 5 000 dollars en eh prison pour cette année et aussi yon sa trouvé condamné pour ni prison et pour payer l'argent là. Pour commémorer moi pour encourager mon pour lui, ministre de pour les jeunes et étudiants pour lui, ministère de l'éducation à collaboration et puis représentatif parlement pour Babono, on a Ezekiel Joseph, tu as récemment tenu une compétition déposée pour deuxième année. Samson Charles, Hot Balata, trouvé la victoire par Jamien Serafin, Hot Fonasso, et Karupa Bikwesna, Hot Borges, trouvé deuxième prix et troisième prix. L'année ça là, c'est la deuxième année qui commune Balata qui a gagné une compétition pour Isia. Vous pouvez sentir parler moi pour Babono, on a Ezekiel Joseph déclaré que Là où vous pouvez étudiants participer dans ces qualités et activités et initiatives comme ça, il peut placer dans une meilleure position ou capable de faire plus. Il dit pour ça, il a fait un commitment et puis le bureau d'éducation pour Babono pour continuer l'activité. Officier de l'éducation pour Babono Cyrus Sepal a annoncé qu'à ce qui est venu, il a ajouté une compétition pour les étudiants et qui a un sujet et pour lui. Pour ça, il a créé à ce tout pour travailler ensemble, pour faire ça en réalité. Côté, qu'on cite comme il y a même en Babono, les paupiers, les polices, les médias, tout ça, pour faire les étudiants plus capables pour s'allier avec écrire avant de retourner à l'école secondaire. Les participants qui ont eu une compétition, ils ont trouvé un prix qu'on livre, plat de l'honneur et laptops. 
Il y a une facilité mondiale pour faire l'environnement qui était établi depuis l'année 1992 qui a assisté à façon financière et technique pour n'importe quel projet qui a fait pour protéger l'environnement dans le pays. Pas dans le même temps, car un des impouvés la vie des peuples. Agence à la carte et puis programme pour un des établis façon pour balancer la brise des peuples là et ce qui est important pour préserver l'environnement. Programme ça là, j'ai investi en commerce yon près 67 millions de dollars. L'agence à la carte, c'est l'agence de la carte là et en uh, 124 pays et puis 23 000 projets. Depuis le mois d'octobre l'année 2012, projet a déjà investi 5, près 7 millions de dollars. Mais oui, devant ce deuxième rapport, par l'année concernée pour comme ça, la cette ci qui était pour cours le 15 mai, le coordinateur national, Giles Romulus, déclaré que des gros services qui cette ci capé en bas pour comme ça, pas bon pièce sur le banon. En l'année 2017, le programme a approuvé 17 projets, mais 17 projets, mais ça descend pour en 10 l'année 2018. Si l'on Romulus, il y a une raison, c'est parce que ce qui est engagé dans ce projet, ça là, car après trop de temps pour planer et pour savoir si vous avez assistance financière à total. Mais il y a vrai qui, malgré l'année, il y a des trois cassements, le programme là, car continue pour trouver succès. Il y a vrai qui, pendant l'année, pays, il y a un régime qui a débattu toujours pour approuver le projet. L'année, l'autre pays qui a fait très bien. Il y a vrai, pour exemple, Sofrié, qui a embrassé un bon autre assistance financière pour implémenter le projet ça là. Et que ça a l'occasion d'un bon changement en commune souffrir c'est l'année qui a venu. Depuis octobre l'année 2012 pour décembre 2018, le programme a employé 1350 personnes et a étonné plus de 6000 personnes. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore si vous conserver la vie, je vous présente à l'autre. Nouvelle accueil. Je vous souhaite un bon finissement de semaine et puis je vous présente au Nisha. Merci au Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Winds will be blowing from the east near 16 miles per hour or 26 kilometers per hour. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds moving along the wind flow will bring some brief showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries was high at 2.33 p.m. and will be low again at 7.37 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was high at 3.40 p.m. and will be low again at 9.04 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.36 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.